So let's all listen to what they have to say and then we can also comment on them. Every group can have 15 minutes and then we'll try to see if we can develop one common presentation. In. As a mountainous state with the largest number of remote inhabitants in a state, geographically challenges are foremost in delivering health care to its citizens. Number two, the state deep wide into the challenges which reveal that short birth spacing leads to high maternal mortality, anemia, teenage pregnancy, remoteness, poverty, and low trust in health system. Can you also explain a little bit? Can you also explain a little bit? Okay. Explain and I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 okay, no explain. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Whatever you are comfortable with. <laughs> Lack of awareness regarding healthcare facilities, especially in rural areas. Ignorance to enroll due lack of knowledge, cause to hesitancy to be vaccinated, etc. Unwillingness to link MHIS card with Aadhaar card. Lack of infrastructure and services in public hospitals, CICs, PICs, UHCs. Then come to curative method. The current trend in patients' disease management is mostly aimed at addressing their present health complaints. The focus is thus purely curative. Infrastructures in all aspects should be available in all health facilities to help a common man financially. Regular supplies of medicines and equipment as well as diagnostic tests are a major issues. So, so tomorrow we will also uh, tomorrow we will also develop solutions to these challenges. So every group can you know uh, think about the solutions also that we discussed today. Uh, for us, for our group, we actually we are going to represent mainly is on the primary healthcare. Okay. So uh, the first part is uh, what we've written is the status of what is actually. I may not be up to date, but as long as I was, uh, you know, working at a primary health center, so whatever ideas that I got from my group also, we have just pointed uh, and noted those down. So mainly in the maternal and child health care, what has, uh, the status was that we've always been doing like the screening of the high-risk pregnancy, family planning, and uh, mother app, as uh, someone had pointed, it has started out, okay, so that has really helped a lot as we have seen uh, from the response. And uh, immunization, as we all know, um, especially in Meghalaya, it's also it's very still very low, especially in remote areas where the people are still very reluctant. Usually, as per my experience, I can say sometimes a whole village will not immunize their children. Okay, even if we go there house to house, how many ever times, they'll welcome you. We'll go and you'll sit down and you know chit chat and all that, give quiet to us and all that. But then in the end. It's always a big no. Oh. And if somebody in the village starts giving also, they start immunizing, you know, it's like later they tend to stop coming. 
and the reason is always they won't usually they always give us vague answers of course that the baby is not well and all that but you know this this immunization i think is still a very Serious. big problem as we still a, a lot of awareness okay and um, is this largely is this largely confined to immunization or to other areas of care also you no know, so other areas are there, but, uh, i mean village areas especially no but but i mean only about uh, this hesitancy is about immunization yes, yes, largely yes largely. but other forms of healthcare they are fine they are coming if, even if the child is not well they come running ah, okay, okay. that is there okay. but for immunization <gasps> immunization yes okay. And uh, <clears throat> the rescue mission, this is also something new, which I actually, I don't have a lot of ideas. Maybe some of you have more uh, you know, knowledge on this. And uh, the nutri just, uh, nutritional status of the children also. We still find that a lot of them is mainly low to moderate. You know, still we haven't come up to that stage where we're saying, okay, fine. Of course, the Aganwadis are there, as we all know more. They do provide and the midday meals, but then still, mm -hmm. they still need a lot of improvement. And then um, we come to the communicable diseases um, like malaria, tuberculosis, you know, HIV, which is also uh, going up now, increasing. Then cholera, typhoid, all these are there in the communicable diseases. Of course, improvement is there because uh, people, as I said, if it's anything which has. Can you use the mic? Yeah. Like I said, no, if anything which is, I think the, they're more aware, of course, we can see. Then the people do come, and uh, but the thing is, uh, we still have the challenges, as we'll point out later. Like tuberculosis, of course, we still have a lot of challenges there. Uh, on the decrease malaria, we see decreasing uh, with the usage of you know, as we see, we do get a lot of um, what do you say? The villages are being um, given every year, especially in those specific villages where we know there are a lot of malaria cases. So. Uh, both like mosquito nets and all the preventive measures are being given. Okay, and um, typhoid is also there. Okay, which is still, of course, is an on and off disease. Then, in a non-communicable, I can say that uh, the status as of now has really improved because of the health and wellness center since this has started. So, I have also been trained in that actually when I was in PC. So, you know, we screen. The, from the ages of uh, male or female, 30 years and above, we just come for OPDs, we screen them for like, of course, the BP we check and the RBS and for, especially now with the increased cases of cancer. Mm -hmm. So this we do the screening and from the dental side also, they do the oral uh, screening, okay? This is facility-based screening. This is yeah. facility based. This is uh, also, that, uh, health and wellness. Uh, ah, but also yeah. uh, home-based, community-based screening is also there? Now, maybe so, because at that time, we just started, so oh, okay. <laughs> I, that was more than four years back since <laughs> I left the PC. And then, um, of course, the mental health program, mm -hmm. this is also something which is very important since I myself have joined MIMHANS. I mean, we, you know, we've seen like, I didn't expect us to say that many cases we can get, you know, in OPDs or those who are being uh, hospitalized. So my colleague is a psychiatrist, so I think we can have on that. In a nutshell, is there also ayush in uh, mental health okay no ayush is not like uh, no ayurveda yoga ah Ayush is not included in uh, mental health care, okay. But I think with the district mental health program, a lot of improvement is there, we can see that. Mm -hmm. Because those who, you know, from far flung villages, even if they can't come to us, so this, uh, they go, you know, every week, so mm -hmm. they are seeing patients. Mm -hmm. Of course, that is more in East Khas Hills, I don't know about the other districts, still maybe less, I think. And then, uh, 
we come to the community involvement in primary healthcare. That is, of course, we all know the basic our root workers, ashas. We cannot do anything without them. And um, the VHC, and then the, we have the obviously the headman or the you know the rangpachnongs, and the block office. This is really we really need the help of this you know overall. And then, uh, as in general, I, I think so I mentioned today about the birth and death registration. Mm. So I was just like to say, like this is like is coming for uh, reporting the death and birth weekly is being done by the ashas. Or if a village doesn't have an asha, ganwadis, you know, they keep reporting to the PC or CEC involved. And this is being the reporting is being done, sir. Okay. So uh, besides that, of course, the PCs and the private hospitals and other hospitals. But and cause of death certification would be low, I guess. Cost? Ca cause of death, cause of death. MCCD, medically medically certified cause of death. Uh, that will be low. low, I think, yeah. But then, uh, I think, I don't know about now, but I can say, like, um, of course, we do often on, always tell, especially the ashas and the youth, okay. always, you know, mm -hmm. inform us. Okay. Okay, because we give that, now that 21 days period is there, no? So that they can advise, they, they have to file an affidavit and all that. So come within that 21 days, so that they will, uh, you know, they can be certified. Okay. Okay. And then, um, the home deliveries, of course, uh, home deliveries are still there. Mm -hmm. It still hasn't been, I mean, once upon a time, it was uh, from the government side, we had tried like, you know, um, for us to submit the names of those who conduct the home deliveries, you know, the local people. Mm -hmm. But then that doesn't, didn't work out well actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> I can say. Because people sometimes they trust them more than they ah, do the health care. Yeah. Trust issue. Yes. And then, uh, okay, that was it. And of course, I can say that uh, in the, at the primary level, of course, considering the Surgical procedures, we're just doing the simple ones, and that's mainly sometimes you know equipments are not available and all that. Okay, so whatever we can manage, we manage. Otherwise, we refer. Okay, after that is the IEC materials. Of course, IEC materials. I can say it has been distributed. Okay, well overall, and I mean whichever program is there, supposing like you know we IEC materials we do receive. Is a, we have the displayed, especially like in the different villages, we have like the ICDS centers and all that. So, uh, what the sub centers? And now we have even the health and wellness center in the sub center along with the sub center. Mm -hmm. So, this has really worked out well. Mm -hmm. And uh, awareness programs. Awareness programs also, of course, we have conducted off and on everywhere. But sometimes, like I said, in some villages, you know, even though we have given like prior information, we have prepared everything, some villages just nobody will turn up, okay, so then again leads us back, you know, to go back to your house to house, which is very difficult mm -hmm. for each and every health worker, sometimes even other doctors we go, you know, especially to very reluctant families, okay, so the challenges, I think I've spoken a lot more about the challenges, so the lack of skilled personnel is still there, shortage of manpower is still there, as we all know. And then inadequate equipment, infrastructure. This I'm not talking only about the primary, yeah, you yeah. know, and this is I think I can speak well even for our hospital also. Still a lot of uh, shortages are there. Then of course number one is that stigma and discrimination is there. Inadequate documentation because um, uh, along with uh, for MHIS, I think they can speak more with, um, you know, Aadhaar card now we have to link. Mm -hmm. So that has become a very major problem <laughs> because oh. so many people here are still reluctant <coughs> to uh, register for Aadhaar card. Oh. Mm -hmm. So and then we have the financial issues of course of the family, okay? And the uh, connectivity issues, roads very bad and you know sometimes they don't even have some, they have to walk for kilometers mm -hmm. to even uh, get a vehicle or sometimes then what happens is they have to book that vehicle right and they have to pay more mm -hmm. especially during COVID I can say like some patients say in Mimhans they don't show up for months why because of financial strain and then <coughs> lack of awareness as we said sometimes more on the, all the uh, whatever is availability uh, of the in the different centers and the schemes and the benefits of the schemes there's still a lot of uh, lack of uh, awareness in these fields then the shifting of residents also this is also 
one of the major problem we have seen because most of the time when they shift, you know, nobody is being informed as to where the they have shifted. Okay, so we don't know sometimes the follow up of cases, like for example, maybe a TB case, you know, they just shift and then we sometimes lose out on that patient. We don't know the follow up. And uh, uh, misconceived, uh, lack of funding, yeah, lack of funding also. <laughs> I think this, I, everyone can agree on this. There's a, lot, a lack of funding. And then um, misconceived belief, this is still there. Then the quacks are there. You know, like I said, trust issues are still there. And uh, traditional leaders, you know, sometimes they trust them more. And of course, we come to the digitalizations of data. This is still, we're still far from all this. So sometimes if patient, like I can say, for example, like Anmim hands, we usually give a diary because our patients, they need their medicines, like, so we keep a record by keeping a diary. And our patients are like, sometimes they just, they're in that state of mind where they don't want to come. They tear their diaries and they throw, they burn, and we lose all this documentation. And you know, sometimes, okay, if it's an old, old patient, we have known him, the psychiatrists have known him, okay, fine. But then, you know, if it's like the patient that comes just one, two times, you kind of lose track of what, uh, which is actually very important, no, for a uh, patient. And then, uh, if we come to uh, inadequate uh, power supply also is there, uh, which is actually very, I can say even till now, right, we still have the load shedding, which is inconvenient as uh, for hospitals. And then the internet connectivity, obviously, if no power supply, again, internet connectivity won't be there. Again, this becomes a hindrance and it delays most of the things, most of the work. And I think another major issue which we realize is that the inadequate availability of drugs. This is right to the primary health centers, I, uh, you know, the hospitals. So it's really, that's when the, I feel more of the people, they tend to go to private practitioners and spend more money because of the, anyways, in the end, if you just see them and then again, we ask them to go to the pharmacy to buy the medicines. So this is also another major problem. Okay, so that's all. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, any comments or suggestions? Or, yeah. Oh, MHIS, you all want to add? No? I yeah, think it's better you all. Something? No, no, just, just, just a question mark there. I just want to summarize <coughs> just one thing like, you know, uh, no doubt about the government. Because we're talking about the government. No doubt. The government has put a lot of effort in implementing, you know. Different kind of different you know, programs like we talk about the level of high health, we talk about communicating with them, we can involve the community at the block level, at the PSC, different things. The course has been there. And with the course and challenges that we have, the question arises but where do we stand right now with regards to universal health care? Hmm. Are we there yet? Or do we still have something to work on more? You know, like we talk about the of course. Like the dimensions there, what about the effectiveness? Hmm. How effective is it at the field level? So that is still a question for us. And then after you want to call images. Images is there. So if you don't look at the outcome of the patient goes there, that's why it is there. So this kind of thing when you look at the Yeah. Exactly. That's a very important thing actually. Like in you know, in pharmaceuticals also, uh, there are three terms that they use. Uh, safety, quality, efficacy in pharma. Uh, if you look at the CDSEO, which approves drugs, so safety, quality, efficacy. Now, uh, there is something in pharma called, uh, so first you have clinical trials, you study the efficacy at that level. Then after the drug has been approved, it, uh, it's called post-marketing authorization, uh, post-marketing something. Uh, then after that you have to conduct, uh, once the drug is in the market, you have to conduct pharmacovigilance, which is like how is the drug affecting the patient. And that data should go to the pharma company, to the government, because then that is where you actually understand how is the drug impacting the person who is consuming it. So that, you know, uh, in, similarly in MHIS, once you have given the treatment, what is the impact? So follow up with the patient. So is it actually having an impact in terms of health outcomes, efficacy side of it? So safety, quality, you can see, but efficacy is something that, you know, you need to have... Uh, monitoring systems in place, you know, so how do you do that? That would be something very important, yeah. Great, great, wonderful. So, uh, so tomorrow we'll also uh, discuss what sort of, sort of solutions can be developed to tackle these challenges. So because knowing the challenges is good, <laughs> but also how do we solve, you know, 
so like a good doctor does you know diagnosis and also prescription so tomorrow is a prescription day please do come <laughs> so today we are just well, thank you so much that's great wonderful thank you lot first of all dear cutting this present or current status of this universal health coverage that we are talking about as of now we don't have a monitoring or evaluating system in our state so we don't have a proper or quality data for analysis of the outcome as well as of the impact okay now coming to the challenges one by one first of all to the quality care when we say quality care it refers to the safe patient centered centered effective timely services where continuous improvement improvement based on the monitoring and performance indicators where we can collect and then analyze the data and implement the strategies to enhance the healthcare deliveries and outcomes so one of the challenges here you could see it is unequal distribution of healthcare resources when we say healthcare resources it refers to human resources or skilled professionals drugs equipments and these are not distributed on the population centered basis then next point we have shortage of skilled healthcare professionals the third point inadequate infrastructure irregular availability of drugs diagnostics and medical equipment which is almost the same like the first point then fragmentation and lack of coordination and communication and for this we don't have a good tiered common system right from the top or down level sorry to the top level where the challenges can be streamlined and addressed by the appropriate authority so to say we are working you know exclusively like kind of isolated without proper monitoring from the proper appropriate authority then patient safety and medical errors which is one of the challenges that we need to overcome to provide the best services to the patients then monitoring of the performance the indicators like i said in the beginning we don't have as such health information systems or we do have this hmis even though we do have this but analysis of the data is not yet being practiced properly so it impedes our goal in such a way not to achieve that quality healthcare services then coming to the last one the last challenges in quality care it is state health policy we do have this but awareness of this policy amongst the stakeholders is still lacking behind and poor as you say therefore implementation of the policy and quality services has suffered then coming to equity which is one of the challenges and in this we have sub points as you say access to healthcare services based on patient needs the services should be based as per patient needs because there are variables like age gender then geographical distribution which are very varied and has to be addressed then we have this another point health workforce distribution it is one of the challenges in which what happened actually there is no collaboration among other departments like education phe pwd and so on so the patient they don't have that choice for a common platform or particular platform for health services then health literacy oh sorry that is uh, okay sorry the next point gender and socio economic and geographical disparities there are vulnerable population groups i should say like women children poor people elderly these are not usually taken into account when we talk about quality health services in our state sometimes now going to the types of services there are three types of services uh, various types of healthcare services it could be physical mental and social and these should have a separate platform so that quality health services can be provided to them accordingly then continuum of health services here we have promotive care in the form of health education regarding particular disease and ways and means how to prevent that disease then palliative care for serious ill, Ill patients like cancer patients heart failure patients curative care simple example is giving antibiotics to bacterial infections all this must be addressed in the universal health coverage so just one thing uh, yes, so this must be done but what is the situation right now in meghalaya as of now which one sir so about this thing uh, so 
Do you think there is it, adequate focus on mental right now? It started, but not in the proper way. I should say. Okay. It has to be streamlined. Okay. Now affordability. First point is cost of healthcare services. Here, there is high cost of these healthcare services, particularly the high-end drugs and diagnostic tests like MRI, CT scan, and PET scans. And even for this, also like people in government setups, even if they visit the government hospitals, they have to go outside in the private hospital to do this test and all. So, which leads to increased cost of health services. Then, accessibility of healthcare services, and together, I'll take with this third point: income disparities. Geographically, if we see in the villages, some of places are hard to reach areas where people sometimes they cannot access to healthcare services 24/7, making them to travel far long distance, and they have to you know spend money for travel. They are sometimes lodging, fooding, and all this lead to the increase of healthcare services again, increase in the costs, I should say. Then coming to income disparities, so as we all can say that. Uh, poor people are there, rich ones are there. Rich ones they have a choice, but for poor ones they don't have a choice. And if they do so, it might lead to the financial burden. And for the rich people, they can choose whatever they want, driving these poor ones again into deeper poverty. So with this, I wind up. Thank you so much. Any comments? Any comments? Suggestions? Yeah. It's very comprehensive. Uh, just had one question uh, because you mentioned that uh, healthcare should be as per the needs of people. Is there any health needs assessment done in the state? Assess the needs of health needs of people? Because uh, I think you were also referring to this earlier that the requirements are different for different states and different population groups. So how do we cater? So there is no assessment as such. So there is a package of services which is supposed to be provided to everybody or you mean to say like H M M M H I S or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so MHIS is also insurance uh, and OPD coverage is there but is there any uh, like Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, right. Okay, okay. That surveillance system is also missing. How is the data use side of things? Like you mentioned, the data, data, the HMIS. Yeah. yeah. You, how? Analysis is done. Okay. So, what about the surveys like the NFHS data or other? Are they being used by policymakers? Probably. Probably. Okay. 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 Any other databases that you use uh, for, like, you know, there is this global burden of disease. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is there any local survey which is being done by the state itself? Like Tamil Nadu, I know, does its own survey. Uh, like the, it's better than the NFHS, they say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So, data use is also something which is very critical. Like I have seen in Rajasthan, they collect a lot of data. Uh, they use IT a lot. But then uh, the use is not there. Also in Kerala. Quality is also important, and but but the use is also very important. I guess I was talking to the NHM mission director in Kerala. 
So they say we have printed reports. So we don't know how to use the raw data of NFHS. Now, how many reports am I going to turn and how do I actually use it? So you know, so, so how do you actually use it when there is already a program or policy uh, for monitoring purposes? And then mid course correction also, you know, so if there is something being implemented. <laughs> ah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So th that's something that we will discuss in detail tomorrow as well. Yeah. Any comments or suggestions? I have a question. Since uh, you mentioned the part that the data collection aspect is there. So, the National Health Mission, every year we prepare these, uh, so known as uh, program implementation plans. PIPs. Which we submit to the ministry yeah, yeah. getting our various financial approvals of right, various sure. activities. So, in order for us to arrive at that calculation, we do have certain kind of data collection right from the sub center level. Yeah. So each uh, ANM, uh, the uh, auxiliary nurse midwife, which is there at the periphery, they have a number of villages under them mm -hmm. where they conduct immunizations and various kinds of activities. So they do collect certain data, like the, uh, <coughs> for example, uh, the ecological couple mm -hmm. uh, data and the population. So I wouldn't say it would be in a scientific way of collection, but they do collect to a certain extent and based on that we prepare kind of a analysis wherein we project our proposals to the ministry. Mm -hmm. But of course uh, the proper analysis of such data is not being done. Mm -hmm. The proper analysis for perhaps finance? Yes, financial really aspect. Like mm -hmm. the disease burden aspects not looked into. You yes, know, yes, like yes. Like Ma'am was mentioning, you know, you know the malaria incidents might be more in Darwin's in the part of the region. But, you know, that Proper analysis yes, is yes, right. We do have some yeah. sort of data yes. collection, but not in what we need. Exactly. 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 We want to, yeah. It's not used for broadcasting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's also just one thing that, you know, uh, you like you mentioned about NHM, uh, you see most of the financing goes to uh, reproductive and child health, but the burden of disease is more on the non communicable disease side. So that disparity I still don't understand, yes. but we can discuss tomorrow about how to we, uh, but, but that's something that you know, I, I mean I have collected data from 2005, 6 to 15, 16. Most of the funds go to the RCH side, but the burden that has reduced over time. So why do we keep spending more money on something which is not as relevant as you know, non communicable disease for example, you know. Probably because our indicator session is exactly. Which will do performance and Okay. But but when you when we say triple burden of disease, it's you have to deal with them simultaneously. Exactly. It's not like. I'll deal with this first mm, and then yes. I'll come. But by the time that would have exploded, mm. you know. <laughs> so, so we'll have to develop a simultaneous strategy. Yeah, so I think data is also one issue that uh, which is there. We have estimates from the global burden of disease, but there, those are all estimates and, you know, uh, I mean, it's not actual data. It's just projections and whatever we have from there. One more thing, one more question, because you are doctors, you would know this. Uh, so, uh, the World Bank makes the argument that universal health coverage is also very important to tackle antimicrobial resistance. So, because then universal health coverage means that you are, you track where the antimicrobials are going and you know where this resistance might be happening or is happening. So, do you think? Uh, yes, yes, we are looking for some stewardship program on that. Okay, there is, it's there. Uh, but do you think the UHC side helps in that regard? It helps? Okay, because then you know where. Where, where the medicines are going and you know, okay. great. Great, great, thanks a lot. Any comments, association? Otherwise, we can move to the last presentation. Okay, uh, is it working? Yeah. yeah okay, so like 
what uh, we have, we are supposed to present the status of your universal health coverage and what are the challenges uh, that we are facing in the state. So, uh, right now when we talk about universal health coverage, as I have mentioned in the morning, we are yet, I mean like we are already on it, even though we might not have achieved, you know, the full sense of the term. Uh, so, through the CPHC program or the Comprehensive Primary Health Care, we have been able to upgrade our health centre at the sub-centre level, uh, the PHC level and even on the urban health centres. So, under CPHC program, I believe everyone here are aware that we have upgraded the services not just from, for maternal child health immunisation, but we have expanded the services for non-communicable uh, communicable and also wellness activities. Uh, more importantly, the promotion and the prevention uh, component of healthcare system. Uh, we also say that uh, at currently with the World Bank project, which is uh, funded uh, under the MHSSP uh, project, uh, we have been able to actually address the financing part uh, in order to strengthen the infrastructure and the service uh, delivery component uh, through the IPA. Uh, the capacity building of every level of care, including the community, uh, you know, uh, members have been enabled through these uh, World Bank funded uh, projects. We are also working in uh, terms of policy interventions uh, on various aspects. For example, uh, we are talking about the HRH. We do not have a transfer or, you know, a transfer or a posting. Uh, policy right now. We have irrational transfers and posting we put people in the wrong place in the wrong time. Uh, we usually, uh, you know, post uh, somebody in a place where he, had, he can't work. Uh, and there could be so many reasons that uh, we can uh, we can understand. Yeah. In fact, I'd like to add a bit. You see, there's something new which we're starting to say. Uh, Results-based financing. Mm -hmm. So this results-based financing which we've initiated now under the project, the Mirada Health Systems Economy Project, we are trying to bring in investments by empowering the various entities, right from the primary health center, the community health center, the district hospital, the district medical and health office, that's the administration part, mm -hmm. the directorate of health services, by the way we have three directorates here in our state, the directorate of health services MI, medical institutions, directorate of health services uh, maternal, child health, and family welfare, and CHNF and Director of Health Services Research. So what we're doing through this kind of uh, funding, and of course we're also involving the MHIS component also, which is a state only agency. So we've, we've, we have said, uh, uh, you know, identified certain performance indicators for each and every entity. And in some way or the other, these indicators are interlinked. So right from the PHC to the CC to the DH, you know, and then based on these indicators that the health facilities achieve, we give them uh, funding. So we have, uh, we uh, link each and every performance indicator which, uh, with a percentage of funding or a total budget and then based on their achievements, we give them money. In fact, we don't just uh, assess on their performance in the initial stages to help them uh, you know, uh, try to achieve these indicators. We provide them such, uh, something which is known as a one-time grant. So we'll give them like a one-time grant say, okay, this is money for you to try to achieve your indicators. And every quarter, we do this assessment. So, based on that assessment, how much they score, they get money for that. Mm. And, and why we're doing this is also, you know, we also, while we're trying to achieve what we enforce standards. Mm. So, in order for us or any health facility to be able to achieve that enforce standards, there are the minor, minor things of uh, interventions that they would like to do. For example, you know, they don't have uh, proper, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> they don't have toilets or drainage system. They can, you know, use that, utilize that money further improving their quality. So that is one part of it. Another thing, the capacity building, we are bringing in technical agencies. Mm -hmm. On uh, uh, one aspect is the uh, clinical weekends, or uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where we do the medical, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, assessment, the, mm -hmm. the technical assessment of the skills of the existing competencies. Humans. Yeah. So uh, you know, we create an IT platform where they can do a kind of a review of their skills mm -hmm. from time to time and do a, a some kind of a learning. This is of course uh, limited to. Um, Currently, only to the health facilities, that is the mm -hmm. DH, PHCs, and CHCs, not the administration part. Mm -hmm. So, that is one part of the uh, uh, capacity. So, this we need are self administered, like they do it themselves? Yes. Uh, online? They, they ah. have like a okay. uh, IT platform where you know, they okay. just view a case scenario. Okay. Just like the kind of a 
Right, right. Skill based so, uh, right, right. learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of exactly. Yeah. And of course, we link this also with the internal performance improvement. Mm. So, for each and every uh, health facility, the number of uh, you know, tests that they're doing and, and how much they score, that is also, in a sense, helping us out. Oh. So, that is one part of the capacity building. Another part is we also have a technical agency which is helping us out in the techno managerial aspect. Mm-hmm. See, these, uh, they, we have just onboarded this team and they have done their baseline the training needs assessment. What we are going to do eventually is help our, we have a regional train, uh, health and family training center at the state level, which usually uh, helps and in uh, providing uh, different kinds of training to, for all uh, categories of uh, healthcare professionals. So we are trying to bring in the techno manager, uh, managerial aspect also, wherein uh, maybe for a medical officer to uh, uh, Maybe capacitate them in uh, trying to, uh, you know, based on the data that we have, like for example, forecasting. How do we forecast mm. on this data? How do we plan for the next things like that? Mm. Or on how do we, uh, maybe in the procurement process, there are certain minor procurement processes that we have to do. Such kind of things we are trying to inculcate uh, mm. and involve. In fact, not just the medical, even the management cadres or the people who are there at the program management units, mm-hmm. how do we best implement the you know the data which is there with us and try to achieve a certain level of indicators. And of course the policy intervention is our team is very much involved along with the uh, health department so in trying to uh, uh, like uh, my team was mentioning there that you know, we don't have a proper human resource policy. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example um, a specialist who are in the state they don't have a separate separate cadre. Mm-hmm. So if uh, if let's say there's a uh, one small example, let's say there's a gynecologist who's working in a health facility providing a clinical service, and that person is due for promotion, and uh, you know uh, uh, let's say to a joint director level, but that uh, that particular specialist, in order to not uh, you know forfeit the promotion, will have to uh, you know move from the clinical to the administration mm-hmm. aspect because they want to go for the promotion. Mm-hmm. But we don't create a kind of an atmosphere where you know we can allow them to take the promotion and stay in the clinical aspect. Mm-hmm. Something of that sort. Mm-hmm. Choice is not given these things. Mm-hmm. Or the public health management guys. Things like that. So this is under the process where the team is uh, you know, uh, in the process of uh, building something of this sort. Wherein we can bring in a policy change in the entire aspect as well. Or the placement, posting, is in ra- rational deployment of human source. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a particular trained uh, person is not posted in a place where he or she can bring in the skill that they know. So in that sense, that is also it. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, to continue, uh, the status in Meghalaya is that we already uh, work towards the universal health coverage under the leadership of our principal secretary and the other you know, head of departments, whereby they work together uh, for a target intervention initiatives, for example, the village health council. So village health council is a very new term uh, and most of you all here might be already aware and might need to be aware of this as well. It is, uh, we are trying to empower the village, the community level. Uh, it is like more or less like a panchayati right system uh, that we are trying to build in, in, the, in the sense that people at the village level should be aware of the health needs of the people of that village. They should be the one to identify you know, any uh, cause of emergency or the kind of like what you have rightly said, we have not done any kind of survey. So any every village are to be empowered to actually do a survey for themselves mm-hmm. and map the kind of disease that are available, uh, create that kind of ownership and demand uh, the, mm-hmm. the services uh, that mm-hmm. is supposed to be given to the village uh, or to the community. So that is one intervention and this is uh, working with community rural uh, C- uh, CNRD department, we work with social welfare department and other allied departments. Uh, the rescue mission is also one uh, kind of, uh, we have heard one group mentioning about this, where this is basically for maternal and child health review. Sorry, uh, where we sorry one to, clarification. Yeah. Uh, the village health committee, uh, are they also council. about... Council. sorry, council. Yeah. Uh, do they are also empowered for accountability? Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Okay. So uh, the, under the PM Abhib, in fact, we have uh, given them the, we have allowed them even to build a sub-center, which mm. is of their dream you know oh. like what do they want to be how does it look they execute the work we fund them mm-hmm. and they have been given bank accounts they were asked to even uh, you know open a bank account and then the credit will be given to them and they are accountable of every task given to them 
just to add, yeah. sorry, yes. uh, just to add on the aspect that she was just mentioning that under the PLA team scheme, we're giving, uh, we're empowering the health village health council mm -hmm. to construct the sub center. Wow. But what the team is doing, you know, uh, from our team is uh, what uh, they are actually doing is we do this uh, consultative meetings before the setup of the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the health sub center. Uh, we, we give, we take suggestions from them and give it inputs. We have a, a pool of engineers with us. Mm -hmm. Wherein they go from time to time, they design uh, based on the consultations. Mm -hmm. We design the we do the designing of the health uh, facility, the health sub center, and of course, um, in fact, yeah, I think let me say a few words on this since we have a uh, oh yeah. so okay. so uh, when we give grants, we have uh, oh, we do the construction for the initial cost. So we do we have a assessment, a land assessment, and we also have a cons uh, consultation, stakeholder consultation with the municipal council. So based on the input that we receive, what kind of uh, um, uh, construction of materials they are very comfortable with, and based on that assessment, we do, uh, after that, we give them a work for the construction of the oh, wonderful. That's And great. the regular monitoring and hand-holding also is there, from is there. where they look. They, they go and guide. So we're not just giving them financial capacity to build a sub center, but also building that capacity in how to build a sub center. But so, does this go on to managing the sub center also, or no, is it just building? That is, <laughs> that is okay. We don't know what will happen in the future. Okay, right? okay. <laughs> right now, building only. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Right. In fact, uh, we have just seen one sub center that is constructed in uh, Garu Hills. It is eco friendly. It's like a green building mm -hmm. where they have built in such a way that it adapts to the weather. If it's hot, it becomes cool inside. If it's cold outside, it becomes warm inside. So they have done that kind of technology, which is like locally, you know, maybe invented with the help of engineers, of course. Yeah. Uh, so those those are the things that we saw that how can community like stakeholders and key, uh, you know, members uh, can contribute towards achieving universal health coverage. Uh, this actually like. Uh, now, okay, fine. Now we talk about rescue mission where we address about maternal and child health, aggressively addressing the cause of maternal death or child death and how can we address and how can we <coughs> correct, like what you have said, this mid-course correction in the implementation of uh, maternal and child health program. We work with other departments uh, on uh, for the ECD mission, which is the early childhood development mission. Uh, we are very much aware that the early stage of childhood is actually an investment for a healthy future uh, so that we work even for the adolescent health program uh, with education department, sports and youth affairs and the CPC program uh, which we have just launched last year is the Megalaya way in which we are trying to focus on the universal screening and when we talk about screening it's not only at the facility level but how can we screen even at the community level on an every six months uh, basis. We screen people every six months and basically for those aged below are above 30 years. So those kind of interventions uh, targeted for a separate age group, like for example I have just said maternal health, child health, then 30 plus age, uh, inclusive of men, women, married, unmarried as well as uh, boys and girls. So the procurement board is also one initiative by the government whereby some of you all have mentioned about the inavailability of drugs and diagnostic on time. Uh, so the, the, the procurement board has been established. It is running now and uh, it is going to be one of the robust system that we hope to ensure that there is enough supply of drugs and diagnostic for every uh, programs or for every need. Uh, basically as per the essential drug list of the state. Uh, the PPP model, I think my colleague can mention, can explain more because he is also in charge. Uh, we work with a lot of organizations to address the gaps that we don't have. So maybe can I mention? Well, of course, we have different kinds of PPP models under the health care system. One of the major, why we want this project is giving more emphasis on the shift care. Mm -hmm. One is we have this uh, cancer care initiative which has been started with initial oxygen hospital, wherein we have uh, tied up with uh, Apollo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Apollo. So, you know, they, they have, we have tied up with them in providing the tertiary care of new relates to cancer. Mm -hmm. in Shilong, so this is we have started in Shilong. Another aspect is in the Garo Hills region, we have tied up with one, um, it's a faith based organization, uh, in this mission, wherein they were already running. Uh, Linux in Garo Hills region, and we have a tie-up with them in picking up one of our uh, newly constructed, it was not newly, I mean, uh, 
quite some time. There was a PMC which was not utilized by the government. We handed over to them under PPP mode and they converted the PHC, the building was a PHC, into a sub digital hospital mm -hmm. where they have pediatrician, they have gynecologists, they have you know, specialists in place providing tertiary healthcare for the Galo Health Center. And this uh, health facility, it's called General Sub Regional Hospital, uh, Hospital. It's so strategically located in Galo Hills, where it can cater to, it's, it falls in the West Galo of course. It's near Pura, which is uh, the headquarters of Galois region of, of West Galois, and it's also uh, strategic cradle and catered to North Galois and East Galois. Mm -hmm. In that sense, people can send, and it's near to Assam. So, if at all they have to refer for a much more critical case, mm -hmm. they can even stabilize a patient and send it over there. So, that is also another aspect where the tertiary care also we are providing. We are also exploring of expanding this service more. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, we have uh, many others where we are tied up. One foundation known as Hands Foundation, where we hand over our sub centers and they are running our sub centers pro bono without any cost. For that. Oh. So these are the various interventions which are also doing under the PPP. Yeah, rightly said. Uh, we are uh, trying to work with many organizations and agencies to address the things that we can't, you know, really cover ourselves. The MHIS is one such uh, agent, uh, agency or health machinery that address the insurance and one thing good about this in our state is that we also cover the OPD services. They are both here and they are the best people to explain. We don't want to do so much on that. <laughs> so the school health and wellness program is also one initiative that we work with the, with the education department. Uh, it is very much uh, towards universal health coverage. Why I'm saying this is because we already understood that the, the early or what you call the premature death is very high in, in our states. Like, I think uh, we are at 63, I think, like our average, uh, you know, lifespan, like uh, in, the, in the state. So, uh, addressing the conditions of NCD on contributing factors, we have the largest number of young people smoking at the age mm -hmm. of 13 in Meghalaya, which actually turns out to be one of those contributors of comorbidities when they are by the age of 13. Uh, the use of alcohol at a very young age, uh, and and so many risky behaviors are being, you know, uh, seen at this uh, young age. So we are trying to use uh, the addressing NCD conditions through the school health and wellness program uh, that we are working with education department, and of course addressing the urban poor. Uh, we all know that in the urban areas there are like a lot of private hospitals and very less. In fact, we do have uh, uh, I mean government hospital, but overcrowded. So the urban health mission, who is uh, our, our program manager, is also here. That like we are addressing the urban poor to ensure that they have access to all sorts of healthcare in line with the health and wellness centers, mm -hmm. uh, so that we can give them affordable and um, yeah affordable healthcare. So those are the things that we say that we are at currently working on. Now the challenges are plenty. That's why we put them on red. <laughs> so, so yeah, we do not have like to start with. We do not have a state-specific indicator like what Madam have just mentioned uh, mm. just now. And you all, like we don't. If you say like, how do you measure Megalia? Like, you don't have. We don't have indicators to say that we are aware. We mm. only depend on NHFS, which is not totally correct for us. So we don't have state-specific uh, indicators for measuring the urban health, uh, I mean like universal health coverage in our state. I think we should work on this to say what are the most prevalent disease or the most, you know, what we are vulnerable for what and what are our strength and weakness. Uh, we have limited integrated approach towards human development in the sense that we know that when we talk about health, we need water, we need road, we need communication, we need agriculture, we need food, we need, you know, we need housing. So, but then, Sometimes like, a person might have everything, but he doesn't have something. So, I mean, like, that is how can we bring an integrated approach towards addressing healthcare? Because at the end of the day, it all ends up with health. Uh, we don't have that kind yet, even though we, I mentioned that Government of Megala is working somewhere, but it's only in the implementation, but not in the conceptualization mm -hmm. of program implementation. Uh, like, we don't have, uh, we have very less uh, compliance towards IPSS or the Indian Public Health Standard norms. When we talk about anything, it may be quality or even human resource. Or for that matter, we can go on. We have not been able to comply to those. 
Uh, we also say that we have irrational deployment of HR, uh, which is very much challenging. And I won't, I won't be scared to say that most of the time it's political intervention mm. or political pressure. Okay. Uh, where in some place we have a lot of people and in some place we don't have anybody because it's far, it's unreachable, mm. it's difficult. Uh, so people opt to get work in a place that is more convenient for them. So the data, the data validation, like what we have mentioned, we do have a lot of data around, but nobody actually validate those data and see that whether it is of use or, or of no use for us. Of course, the National Health Mission is telling us to do certain data analysis. We do that, but not, you know, in a long term, uh, you know, or in a long, uh, I mean, like, in a way that it should address the health need of the state. So can I just yeah, say yeah, say yeah. So when you say data validation, we do know that you know uh, a certain area of an endemic area, for example. So if we don't do a proper analysis, we won't be able to know the specific endemic area. Now, yeah. with the coming of uh, you know the emerging African finance, we are looking at the IPHF, the WHO, that is a proper public health gap and the uh, integrated public health gap. So what happened is. According to the ministry, they say that we have to have an endemic area to construct a lab so that you know, these, uh, this lab will cater to that population and it will make them easily accessible. So if we don't have a proper analysis of these data, we will be like, you know, have to exactly construct these places in wrong places. So basically, like, you know, this is one example of the importance of uh, data validation. And it is a challenge. Yeah. It's a challenge. Yeah. Uh, one more point is that the accessibility, this is more towards the supply side, but that we have mentioned the challenges with us. Now from the other side, from the demand side, we do have a lot of challenge when it comes to access. Uh, we, we have seen our people traveling like three hours to meet, you know, to get to an ambulance. Sometimes they have to cross rivers and hills and mountains. We have seen our health worker traveling with a box of vaccine to get two child immunized uh, in a particular village. Uh, then uh, we have communication problem. We don't have access to even reporting and, uh, you know, like timely monitoring of whatever is happening due to the geographical condition of the state of Meghalaya, which I think we need to design our program in a way that it addresses these problems. The poverty, like we all agree, it's the mother of all human obstacles. Uh, we are still, uh, even though Shalong looks so beautiful here in the city, but in the rural areas, we are still in this vicious cycle uh, of poverty. Traditional and cultural belief uh, is still very much there, and this actually contributes to the uh, dem I mean, demand generation or the demand of service, or sometimes they, they are not even aware of what is good and what is not good for the health and well-being. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenge with MHIS, uh, as we have seen, not from our view, but from the general observation, is that few of the health packages, when we talk about universal health packages for all age group, from womb to two, we saw that there are few services or few packages that are not being addressed for a specific age group or for specific uh, health issues like rehabilitative and palliative services is not covered mm -hmm. under the health insurance. There is a non-inclusive uh, of uh, selected tertiary treatment also for, for cardiac uh, surgery or things like that. So how do we come up with an inclusive or uh, universal health coverage is what we might want to discuss in the days tomorrow or yeah. maybe in the coming days. So thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was very enlightening. Yeah, thanks a lot. Very comprehensive and enlightening. Oh. I think I think we should uh, we should keep our charts, and the same groups can also work on the solutions tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because we have identified the challenges together. Now let's also, and we all have heard different challenges, so we can also discuss the solutions. Do you think it will be better if the same group works on solutions, or we should mix up again? Same group. What do you think? What do you think? Same group should work on solutions? Huh? Uh, okay, so same group? Mm -hmm. Ha, right, right, right. That, that, that's also possible. I think we need to sort all the problems in one place 
and yeah. then find a solution in one, you know, like right. that. So just one thing is that, uh, I mean, uh, the broader health area is there, but I think let's focus more tomorrow on universal health coverage, you know, so the more specifically, I mean, all this relates to universal health coverage, yeah. but let's have a more specific focus on universal health coverage and then see what practical solutions can be developed. And uh, those solutions uh, maybe should be more practical that can be implemented, you know, and so, so great. Thank you all very much.